Same spot you were in, dude. All right, I've had a ton of people reaching out to me asking, how did you buy this mountain estate, this remarkable home, without using any of your own money, without using any of your own credit, and getting a smoking deal on it? This video is all about that. So I got a little bit of a backstory to this mountain estate that I just purchased, and I wanna start from the beginning. Let's go back to the fall of 2020. I was hosting a mastermind event in the Great Smoky Mountains. And so we went up to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and um, I, had, I rented out this massive house, had my entire mastermind stay there, and uh, we met there, and we hung out, and we hiked some mountains, and uh, did a bunch of fun stuff in Gatlinburg. And uh, my family came up too, and my little guy, Hudson, who was, uh, just turned three at the time, became obsessed with mountain house, right? And so uh, he'd go back to school and he'd tell his teachers that he had a mountain house or he was at his mountain house, but we didn't have a mountain house, you know? And, uh, and he's like, dad, can we go back to the mountain house? Mountain house, I wanna go to the mountain house. You hear that enough from your cute little three-year-old and all of a sudden you start looking for mountain houses. I liked uh, the Great Smoky Mountains. Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge, a little bit too touristy, a little bit different vibe than what I, what I was looking for. And so I, um, I was looking more on, on the North Carolina side of the Great Smoky Mountains, kind of that Asheville, maybe south of Asheville. You know, with all the COVID stuff that was going on and everything else, I wanted some land, I wanted access to water, I didn't want to rely on public utilities or anything like that. But I also wanted something pretty grand, something that I could host mastermind events at. The idea was I'm not gonna be able to use it all the time, so I wanna be able to rent it out on a short-term rental basis as well and kind of turn a liability into an asset. By the way, if you've never watched my video on turning liabilities into assets, make sure you check that out. So when I, when I started looking, I was just looking on Zillow, right? And I, I wanted a certain number of bedrooms, that way I could have the house big enough to have my relatives come in, my parents come in, uh, my friends come in with their kids, and, uh, and it'd be comfortable, a comfortable space. Maybe host a mastermind where I can have enough people staying right there at the house where, uh, you know, it just makes sense. So I looked for like, you know, I think it was like five bedrooms, four bathrooms, uh, or bigger, and essentially I wanted 100 acres originally. That was a little bit too much, nothing was on the marketplace, so I scaled it back to around 50 acres, and um, a few more things kind of popped up. But I, I kept my eyes open, probably from you know fall of 2020 up until about spring of 2021, and uh, I just didn't find anything that I really wanted or that I really thought would be a good fit, uh, until Zillow actually you know, I don't know if you've ever seen, but they, they'll suggest properties on, on the app and say, hey, property suggested for you. And uh, there was this house that looked like an absolute castle on the side of a mountain, over 10,000 square feet of finished space, about 12,000 uh, total square feet. It was, it was listed for $3.2 million, I wanna say, but it was only three bedrooms, like eight bathrooms. And I said, something's not right about this listing. Three bedrooms, eight bathrooms, over 10,000 finished square feet. And it's like a castle. Like, like there's got to be more space. Can you make more bedrooms in this house? And so I contacted the realtor and I, I sent her a message and I said, hey, are there any other rooms that I can add a closet or whatever? And, and, and you know, obviously the bathrooms are there, but like, do you have any other space in that, in that house where I can make it more than a three bedroom house? And she said, you know, funny thing is it's actually a five bedroom home. And, uh, and then there's other rooms that could potentially be turned into additional bedrooms. The dilemma is the septic permit is only permitted for a three bedroom house. And, um, and so I did some research, I did some digging on it and realized you don't even need to update the septic tank in order to increase the limit on the house. You just need to increase the drain line on the house and it costs a few thousand dollars. So the sellers had this house on the market for, I don't know, six months or so, but because they couldn't market it for more than a three bedroom home, it was flying kind of under the radar. And I don't think they got the exposure that um, they, they probably could have gotten if they were able to market it as a five bedroom or six bedroom type of a home. So fortunately, it just kind of popped up and, uh, and, I, and I was willing to actually reach out to the seller instead of just taking it at face value of what the listing said. And I actually reached out to the, the listing agent and she's like, no, it actually has a lot more space. So I was like, oh man, this is pretty remarkable. I actually submitted a letter of intent without ever seeing the house. And you know, I'm in commercial real estate, I'm buying and selling buildings all the time. There's a lot of money in, there's a lot of money out. And um, depending on, on where I am, it's just, in order for me to go out and get a mortgage 
on a single family home and show them, hey, where did this money come from? And how, why isn't this season longer for you know three or four or five months? And this and that, and there's just so much paperwork, there's so many questions that I just don't like dealing with it, right? It's, it's not that I uh, couldn't go out and, and, and go through that process, I just don't want to. And so I went to um, the seller and I made an offer, full asking price, $3.2 million at, uh, with seller financing. Me bringing 10% down, $300,000 you know, $320, down, or maybe I just said $300,000 down, them carrying back $2.9 million at a 4% interest rate, and I asked for a 10-year interest-only term. You know, I think, I think in this marketplace, with how hot the market is, a lot of people are like, are you out of your friggin' mind? Like, who would ever accept that? Like, why would you ever make that offer? Well, if you don't swing the bat, you can't hit a home run, right? And uh, I at least made the offer, right? I swung the bat. And I submitted that to, to the agent, and she came back and said, hey, they're willing to sell a finance under a little bit different of terms. They need more money down. Uh, they want it amortized instead of interest only. Oh, and by the way, it's a 60-acre parcel that this sits on. Um, it's actually two parcels. There were seven acres and 53 acres, and they wanted to keep the seven acres to build another house on um, when they sold this. And the sellers, amazing people, right? They're, uh, the gentleman who, who purchased this was an engineer, has a technology business, um, and actually allegedly had some sort of patent or intellectual property on the hardware that scans passports. And so made, made some money, built this remarkable home, this ridiculous house. His wife, um, you know, I, I think he's around 80. I think his wife is maybe early 70s um, range. And she has like an amazing eye and for just phenomenal um, quality furniture, finishes and everything along that line. And then the, the husband, um, he's, he's the kind of guy who's an engineer and wants to make sure everything inside the walls and everything kind of that you cannot see is top notch as well. When I, when I came to look at the house, uh, they actually, you know, we went back and forth a little bit. I had a lot of stuff going on at a big event that I was hosting down in, um, in Key West back in January. And uh, so I, had, I just kind of like delayed this. And so I went out and, and uh, we went back and forth a little bit, but I said, let, let me come out and take a look at the house and then we'll, we'll firm up the terms. So in mid-February, I came up to Asheville, checked out the Biltmore Mansion up in Asheville. I brought my wife, brought my kiddos, um, stayed in a different little mountain house, right? And the kids really like, became even more obsessed with the mountain house. And then we came out here and walked the property and got to check out, this is, this is about an hour south of, of Asheville. There's uh, kind of three main cities. There's Franklin, North Carolina, there's Highlands, North Carolina, and there's Cashers, North Carolina. And I'm kind of right in between all of them. And so, you know, we, we, we drove about an hour south of Asheville, come to check out the house on probably the ugliest February day you've ever seen. Just misting kind of uh, uh, rain and dreary and everything's muddy and everything's ugly and the house was still just remarkable. So I remember walking in, and the realtor, she did a great job. She had like some local donuts that are better than Krispy Kremes that were delivered, and then she had um, some local vendors, and she put like this care package together with us, the best bacon I've ever had, locally sourced, um, and uh, a bunch of different like jams and jellies and um, all sorts of diff different like cute stuff that was all locally sourced from the area. It's very, um, you know, locally supportive type of a community. They had the fireplace going, they had all the lights on, and um, it just, it felt like a home. As, as all, all the other houses, 10,000, over 10,000 finished square feet, and about 12,000 uh, if you include the utility room. I took another space and uh, made it into like a kid's game room that was unfinished before. I took a garage area and made that into like a, um, an adult type of a game room almost, and, and outdoor type of area, third three season type of an area. Um, if you add all that in, it's about 12,000 total square feet of this house. And so I'm checking it out, I'm walking around, I'm realizing you can make this about an eight bedroom house. There's a couple of quirks with the bathrooms and some stuff. I would have had to add a couple bathrooms or expand out some of the half bathrooms. And so I had some ideas there. And um, I'm looking at this thing and uh, usually I'm the guy who is ready, fire, and then aim, right? Like I just jump, if there's something I really like, I'll jump at it. My wife is the one who kind of keeps me more uh, on, a, on a level playing field and realistic about some things. And usually she's the one who's like, well, let's think this through. Do we really want to do this? Blah, blah, blah. And, um, and when she walked into this house, she looked over at me. She's like, 
we have to buy this. We have to. And that's why I knew game on, right? So I, uh, you know, we, we, we took a look at the whole house, took a lot of notes on it, um, and just kind of let it settle. And that following week, uh, you know, resubmitted another offer to the seller. Went back and forth a little bit and landed on me purchasing this property at $2.9 million. And I gave them the, the seven acre parcel. I kept the 53 acre parcel, got them to the seller finance. I brought 20%, well, $600,000 down. They carried back $2.3 million at a 4% interest rate. First year is interest only, and then it amortizes over a 30 year um, amortization schedule, years two through 10, with a, with a balloon in year 10 on whatever the balance is at that time. So I'll either need to refinance or sell the property 10 years down the road. But I have 4% money. I think it's non-recourse when I sign the loan also. I don't think there's any personal guarantee on there. But I have 4% money on this deal on 80% of it. Then, uh, you know, I, I, I went through this process of, you know, I'm gonna need 600 grand down and about probably another $200,000 in order to really like outfit it, make, expand some of the bathrooms and um, deck out the game room downstairs and this kid's playroom that I wanted to do and some visions that I had and all the furniture. You know, you can't just go get a bunch of shit from Ikea. You need to get like really nice furniture so that way everything uh, maintains the, the level of quality throughout the entire house. And so uh, I realized I need about $800,000 down. Uh, I have a bunch of property that I was selling and in the midst of it, but it didn't sell yet. And I realized I, I you know, I don't feel comfortable bringing all that cash myself. Let me syndicate this kind of like how I do with my apartments. And that's what I ended up doing. So I got 80% of the money using none of my own credit. They never underwrote me or anything. I think they probably, you know, researched me and looked me up and made sure I was the real deal kind of a thing. And um, they never asked even for a credit report, right? Like pretty remarkable for somebody who's going to essentially lend me $2.3 million. Obviously I'll always do the right thing, but it's just, it's wild to think that, um, you can absolutely go out and ask for seller financing, even in this marketplace, and get it, you know, with the right terms and, and things that make sense for you. So, anyways, got them to seller finance it, um, the, the majority of it. I needed to go and raise eight hundred thousand dollars for the down payment and some operating capital and some some capex capital improvement money. I packaged this together. Now I have experience in vacation rentals. I own a couple of vacation rentals down in Florida, and uh, didn't necessarily structure those the right way when I first bought those. And again, I went and got traditional mortgages. It was like 7%, 7.3% interest rate with a, with a 70% mortgage on the first lien position, just because short-term rentals aren't seen as something that's like uh, a proven business or a proven asset class. And so it's seen as a little bit more risky and interest rates are a function of risk. So I, I was paying 7% on my Florida vacation rental house, and I was paying my investors 10%, so my blended cost of capital was like 8.5% on the purchase price of, the, um, of my vacation rentals down in Florida. And it yielded around an 8% return, because um, we were just all over the listing, we were, we're in the top um, like one-tenth of 1% 1 of all listings in all of Orlando, Florida, because we're so aggressive on the short-term rental you know, and pricing and all that other stuff that we just have, we crushed it, but we still could only yield an 8% return on our investment. And so that means if the money costs me 8.5%, I'm only yielding 8%, that means Tim has to pony up money every single month to cover that property. And so I learned my lesson on a house that was $700,000 in Florida, and I didn't wanna make that same mistake with a house that's $3 million in North Carolina. So I really underwrote it, um, uh, you know, and paid attention to what are all the overhead expenses. I got copies of all the utility bills, tax bills, insurance bills, all that stuff. And um, uh, it was a big, big chunk of that was making sure that the seller financed at 4% interest rate. But even the, the private money, I can't pay them 10% just because it's, uh, it would, it would, it's too much of a chunk for an unproven, super high-end short-term vacation rental to be able to... Um, pay for that. So I knew I wanted to turn this into an asset, right? I wanted to turn, turn a liability into an asset and then be able to utilize it for myself. I'm not going to be able to stay here, you know, year round or by, by any means, or even half the year. Like, you know, I have to go up to Ohio typically for the summer. I mean, I live in Charleston, South Carolina. My kids are in school. So it's really like if I could use this three, four weeks a year, that's kind of what I was looking for. And then I wanted to rent it out and make sure that it, it covered its own expenses. This is bigger property than anything else in the area. It's nicer by, by 10 times than anything else in the area. And I need to make sure that 
uh, if this thing cash flowed, it would cash flow enough to pay the investors. So I went to the investors and here's how I structured this. I said, hey, for a $100,000 investment, I'll pay you a 4% return on your money, 4% pref, 4% preferred return. And uh, what that, in it, which, you know, a bunch of active real estate investors and passive real estate investors and people who are in my other deals who are making a lot more than that um, are like, yeah, you know, not that interested. But it's still better than if it was sitting in a certificate of deposit or, you know, it kind of beats inflation kind of a thing. They're not going to get rich off of it, but at least it pays them something. And there's a little bit of cash flow. Here's where I really uh, was able to get them interested. I said, listen, I don't want to pay more than that because I'm not sure about the cash flow position that we're going to be in. Here's what I can do. I can give you two weeks a year at the property. So I'm going to give them a high season week and a low season week. And they're going to be able to come out and utilize the property that rents for at least $2,000 a night which means you know, it's, it's essentially $15,000 a week. It's about a twenty-five dollars to $30,000 value to them. Now, I know it's not real cash to them for that $100,000 investment, but they're getting value of another $30,000 in rental opportunity. And a lot of people who came out either have you know, businesses that they can bring their team out here and do like a corporate retreat, or they live in the area and they can bring other families out here, or uh, they can host a mastermind and, and you know, monetize those weeks on their own. So it allowed me to create value for them in a way that they were very interested in lending me money at 4%, right? And so that's what we ended up doing. And I, I hosted a webinar and I had, I think, 25 people on the webinar. And by the time the webinar was done and I showed them the pictures and I showed them the video and I showed them um, the plan and the business model and told them about like you know, a 4% return, but you get some, some time at the property, I, I, had, I only had eight spots open, right? $800,000 was the raise and $100,000 a piece was the incremental investment. I had 24 people knocking down my door wanting to get involved in this property. And so I had, to, I had to sit back and say, hey, you know, the people who have already invested with me, people who have already um, uh, are big investors with me, people who are in my mastermind, uh, they're the ones who got first crack at the opportunity. So um, we brought in $800,000, eight different partners. They each get two weeks at the property. The pro forma on the rental side means I have to rent it for around 20 to 24 weeks a year and I can, I can justify all operating expenses, debt service, and PREF payments to my investors. And so let's call it 24 weeks a year, go to renting out the house. Another, uh, and, that's, and that's an average of high season, low season, holidays, not holidays, um, winter, fall, weekdays, weekends. It's, I took a, a balance of everything. I need about 24 weeks of occupancy. Then I gave 16 weeks, two weeks apiece, to each one of the investors. Um, so that's about, what does that add up to? Uh, 40 weeks, right? That leaves 12 weeks a year for me and my team. And I'm able to access this property for three months a year using none of my own money, using none of my own credit. I can host events here. I can give it to my team for the weeks that I can't make it here. It, it's a way that you can structure an incredible liability, right? So this is something that's been on my dream list is to have a, a, a beautiful mountain lodge uh, since I was in college, right? I, I always wanted a mountain house. And you're thinking like, how can I, how can I afford it, right? How can I pay for it? How can I, um, uh, how much money do I need to make? How much money do I need to save before I can then actually afford this? This is a way that you can get into a deal using none of your own credit, using none of your own money, creating value for enough other people that they're hounding you to partner up with you on an opportunity like this and turning a, something that takes money out of your pocket, a liability, into an asset that puts money in your pocket where now you don't even have any ongoing expenses for the property. So it's, uh, it's been like an absolute dream come true. I'm so proud of the property. I'm so proud to be an owner of the property. I'm proud to be in business with the people who uh, invested in the property. And just the way that we structured it and how much demand there was, um, we're, we're going to do this with some other properties as well. So I'm actually buying an island um, 
in the southeastern portion of the U.S., I'm going to structure it the same way. The island already has a house on it, already has a dock on it, um, it has generators on it, uh, it's parceled off, and I could build more if I wanted to. It's a 110-acre island, and it comes with king's rights, which means it comes with all the marsh and everything around it, which is another 350 acres. So it's 450 acres of property and 110 buildable acres uh, above land. You know, beautiful live oak trees with um, Spanish moss on them and beautiful tall pines and palm trees all over the place and it's absolutely stunning property so I'm going to do the same kind of structure on that as I'm doing or as I did with this with this house and it's uh, again it's an awesome way to get you into uh, your dream second home or a vacation property and structure it in a way that you are able to benefit from owning that asset and at the same time create enough value for other people where uh, they love to be partnered with you and be involved in the property as well. So uh, hopefully you guys got a ton of value out of this. Check out the video of the walkthrough from the before and the after and everything that we did with the property. We turned it into an eight bedroom, seven full bath, two half bath, put a, put a kid's game room in, there's a wine room, there's a, an adult game room, we got foosball tables, uh, ping pong tables, shuffleboard tables, billiards tables, poker tables, um, different areas of the house that we've really cultivated and turned them into amazing entertaining type of areas where people can come here, they can uh, be together in some amazing like um, uh, parts of the uh, of the home that are great for entertaining and um, congregating with, with uh, your family and, and your team and at the same time there's different nooks of the home as well where you can go and have some privacy, have some alone time, go read a book, go and hang out and just um, and hunker down and just kind of relax as well. And so uh, yeah, the property is absolutely remarkable. If you want to come and rent it, we would love to host you as our guest. And uh, we'll, we'll put the, the link to, to rent the property in, um, in the description below. And you should definitely come and check it out, We're either as a family vacation um, or as like a corporate retreat, bringing a team, or if you do any coaching or anything like that, would love to have, host you. This is like an amazing property. So um, it, it, it sleeps 32 people in 21 different beds in eight different bedrooms. And um, uh, you can really, really have a, uh, just a bang out amazing uh, time here. And you don't even have to go anywhere, right? Like there's so much to do right here. We got the hot tub, we have a heated pool. It sits on 53 acres with trails throughout all 53 acres. Go on a, a remarkable hike, get a great workout in. We kept all the workout furniture in the garage so you could still do some workout stuff on, on that equipment. Uh, we got grills, like everything you could possibly want, fire pits, everything here. So uh, you got to come and check it out. It is absolutely remarkable. If you want to come and rent it, check out the description, the link in the description below, uh, or hit me up personally. Let me know because I'm going to be hosting some of my own masterminds here. If you want to come out, we'd love to extend an invitation to you. So appreciate you. Hope you got a ton of value out of this. If um, you did, if you want to share this and you think it's kind of creative and fun and you think others would get a lot of value out of it, please do me a favor, like it share it, click the notification bell, and, um, uh, and again, pass this along to other people who get a ton of value out of this too. It's why I create this content, to share amazing insights uh, with you, and hopefully you're able to go and do some really cool stuff and live the lifestyle of your dreams and you know, capitalize on that stuff based off of my experience and some things that I've, uh, some wins and losses and the ways that I've been able to um, you know, put these, these deals together, uh, hopefully helps you fast track your success too. So appreciate you, love you, go be your best.